I am Dr. Amir Festik. I am pulmonary and critical care consultant at Mayo Clinic Florida. I am a principal author of a study uh, entitled Pre-Hospital Use of Inhaled Corticosteroids and Point Prevalence of Pneumonia Among Patients at Risk for ARDS. This study will be appearing in Mayo Clinic proceedings soon. There has been a clinical concern regarding the risk of pneumonia among patients that take inhaled corticosteroids. The previous studies uh, showed significant associations, mostly among patients with COPD and some with asthma as well. However, previous studies did not address multiple possible confounding uh, factors that may have influenced that risk. Also, previous studies did not necessarily use radiographic diagnosis of pneumonia, and they depended mostly on diagnosis achieved on clinical grounds, which is not specific. Therefore, we decided to do a uh, secondary analysis of a large cohort of nearly 6,000 patients uh, who have risk, who had risk of uh, acute respiratory distress syndrome and were admitted to the hospital. Previous studies also did not uh, specifically look into patients who had pneumonia requiring hospital admission. What we found is that although unadjusted risk was present and it was nearly three times higher for those who were taking inhaled corticosteroids compared to those who were not taking inhaled corticosteroids prior to hospital admission, that this risk, once adjusted for pertinent clinical covariates, was significantly reduced and became statistically non-significant. The subgroup analysis in our study showed that patients with COPD had the highest risk of associated pneumonia. This risk, however, was not statistically significant. The lowest risk was seen in patients with asthma. Both of these findings fit existing literature on a topic. We also described a novel group of patients without known diagnosis of COPD and asthma, and about 3.5% of these patients were taking inhaled corticosteroids. Post hoc analysis showed that these patients had different propensity for inhaled corticosteroids even when COPD and asthma were taken out of the analysis. We speculate that some of these patients experienced persistent respiratory symptoms which led then to prescription of inhaled corticosteroids and shortly after they were admitted to the hospital with pneumonia. What this means is that physicians should focus on possibly developing pneumonia more so rather than only focusing on symptoms of bronchospasm when approaching these patients in ambulatory settings. We think that although not definitive, our results could bring some psychological relief to the patients taking inhaled corticosteroids. It appears that the risk potential risk of pneumonia associated with inhaled corticosteroids may not be due to lone fact that patients are taking these medications, but it's rather related to a multiple uh, pertinent clinical factors other than simply taking inhaled corticosteroids. Future prospective studies should better address the issue of pneumonia in patients who take inhaled corticosteroids. At this point, this link does show possible association. However, whether it is causative effect, it's not quite clear. Also, different underlying diagnoses such as COPD versus asthma and different preparations of inhaled corticosteroids, both doses and uh, generically speaking, may have different results. Personally, I'm working on meta-analysis, which will include some of the studies that were published before and included in previous meta-analyses, and also the studies that were published just recently in the past year or so. 
I expect that this meta-analysis may answer some of the questions and also uh, direct scientific community for further research on the topic. The risk uh, of pneumonia in patients taking inhaled corticosteroids that was uh, described previously is at least in part related to other important clinical factors such as comorbidities, demographics, and uh, concurrent medications. Once these factors are taken into account, the risk of pneumonia among patients who take inhaled corticosteroids is significantly reduced. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.com. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.